Hey guys, it's Jimmy from Over at Movie Death Blows. Happy Monday to everybody. Uh, I'm just going to jump in right into what our next video is going to be. Uh, it's a topic that's pretty close to me. I'm pretty close to this moment, I would say. I wanted to cover the uh, 15th anniversary of the release of Batman Begins, which was today in 2005. Now, it's 15 years ago. I'm 33 now. So when Batman Begins came out in theaters, I had just graduated high school, and I remember going to see it because it came out on a Wednesday, which was, you know, I know they do that sometimes in the summer, but usually you're thinking, you know, a Batman movie, it's got to be a th you know, Friday night, something like Thursday, Friday night, but no, this was a Wednesday. I remember because we were leaving for Senior Week that Friday, which for many of you that aren't from Pennsylvania or anything like that, Senior Week is when you all go down the shore after you graduate and you do a little party. But uh, anyway, back to Batman Begins. So I remember talking about Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins back in the summer of 2004 when you first saw the first trailer for it. I was a lifeguard back then, and I remember I was talking with a couple of my friends, uh, another guy whose name is Jimmy, and a guy that's a couple years older than me, his name is Jamie, and we're talking about it. We're like, you know, what do you think? I mean, because we're huge Batman fans. When I was younger, that's all I watched. You know, when I came home from school, I was, you know, watching Keaton's Batman and Batman Returns. And even, you know, later on you had Batman Forever, which I watched because, I mean, obviously Kiss from a Rose, one of the best songs of all time. That can't even be argued. Come on. And uh, the disaster that was Batman and Robin. So, I mean, so let me, I can't remember what the year difference is between, so I mean, we had Batman Begins was 2005, but I can't remember. I think Batman and Robin was 98. Let me just double check. 97. So we had a eight year gap between Batman movies. After the disaster that was Joel Schumacher's uh, Batman and Robin. I mean, he directed Batman Forever, too, which, I mean, it's a decent movie. It's not anything I would write home about, but nothing. I don't know how they survived the travesty that was a Batman and Robin. Uh, I forget what movie it was from. They made that one reference to it. They said, oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've seen since Schumacher put nipples on the bat suit. I mean, that's just, if you can make a crack about a movie and everything, then, you know, the movie doesn't survive. Yeah, so Batman Begins came out in 2005, and we were talking about it, me, Jimmy, and Jamie, and we were trying to figure out, like, yeah, this movie's going to be awesome again. Like, this looks pretty good. And, you know, we were all excited Batman's going to be dark again. We're going to get this origin story. We're going to get closer to, like, you know, the Tim Burton, uh, Michael Keaton Batman. And, you know, at the time, in 2004, Christopher Nolan wasn't, like, this legendary director that everybody wanted to work with and everybody wanted to sign big projects into. I mean, if you think about it, I saw my first Christopher Nolan movie was Insomnia back in 2001. And then Memento came out a little bit before that, I believe, in the timeline. Let me just double check. Okay, Memento was before those. Memento was 2000 and Insomnia was 2002. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, we hadn't reached peak Interstellar and Inception and we haven't even gotten to Prestige yet. That was the year after. It was 2006. So, I mean, you're not talking about someone that, you know, could be referred to the likes of, you know, Spielberg and Lucas, like some great visionary, legendary director like that. You know, this is, this is a risk that Warner Brothers and DC was taking, just, you know, ha they were handing over to Christopher Nolan. You don't know what you're going to get. I mean, if you watch Memento and Insomnia, you know, they're very good detective stories, but they're kind of dark and they're kind of twisted. So, I mean, you've got to be prepared for that. And I'm really glad they decided to go in that direction because it really ended up working out well for them. And... Christian Bale, the star of uh, Batman Begins, obviously, it wasn't like some huge box office uh, Academy Award winning actor at that point. I mean, if you, if you go back to 2005, most people know Christian Bale from American Psycho. Okay. I know him more from, <laughs> he was the bad, he was one of the bad guys in that horrible Shaft remake that I watch all the time. It's one of my favorite bad movies. He was in that and he was in the always amazing that I reference as many times as possible, Reign of Fire. He was act, there's a so there's two Academy Award winners in Reign of Fire. Matthew McConaughey, Academy Award winner. Christian Bale, Academy Award winner. Somebody who plays a bit part, Gerard Butler, is actually in that movie. If you go watch it again, you'll see it. But I mean, Christian Bale is not a megastar when this movie comes out. This movie turns him into the megastar. This movie had so much riding on it. It had so much fanfare. The internet was a buzz. They didn't know what was going to go on. And then it came out. And it was incredible. There's really not much more you can say other than that. It checked every box. It was dark. It had a great uh, origin story. 
great character actors, great villains. Liam Neeson, Michael Caine. Tom Wilkinson is an Italian mob boss. That somehow worked, I'm not sure. You're taller than you look in the tabloids, Mr. Wayne. No gun. I'm insulted. You could have just sent a thank you note. I didn't come here to thank you. I came here to show you that not everyone at Gotham's afraid of you. Only those who know me, kid. Look around you. You'll see two councilmen, a union official, a couple off-duty cops, and a judge. Now, I wouldn't have a second's hesitation in blowing your head off right here and right now in front of them. Now, that's power you can't buy. That's the power of fear. I'm not afraid of you. Because you think you got nothing to lose. But you haven't thought it through. You haven't thought about your lady friend down in the DA's office. You haven't thought about your old butler. Bang! People from your world have so much to lose. Now, you think, because your mommy and your daddy got shot, you know about the ugly side of life, but you don't. You've never tasted desperate. You're, uh... You're Bruce Wayne, the Prince of Gotham. You'd have to go a thousand miles to meet someone who didn't know your name. So don't, don't come down here with your anger, trying to prove something to yourself. This is a world you never understand, and you always fear what you don't understand. All right. Yeah, you got spirit, kid. I'll give you that. More than your old man, anyway. In the joint, Chill told me, uh, told me about the night he killed your parents. He said your father begged for mercy. Uh, it's Carmine Falcone. You know, Tom Wilkinson's a British guy. He's not, you know, he's not an Italian gangster. Like, you know, he usually plays British gangsters. You know, he went on to be in, uh, rock and roller later on. And you don't think it's Tom Wilkinson is this guy that can pull off, like, this Italian mob boss, uh, accent and tone and demeanor, and he does it brilliantly. Okay. Killian Murphy, who actually screen tested for Batman, Bruce Wayne. They're like, you know, and I think Killian knew. There's, if you, there's some footage they have online of uh, Christian Bale doing his, you know, Bruce Wayne screen test. Killian Murphy doing his Bruce Wayne screen test. And the other guy that played uh, Pinocchio in Once Upon a Time, I forget what his name is, he did the screen test. And, Killian Murphy just looks ridiculous in the bat suit. Cobb. It was Cobb. Look, we need to go. We need to tell Rest. Him. Gordon knows. Gotham needs you. And you serve Gotham? I serve justice. It's not who I am underneath. But what I do that defines me. Trouble? Nothing I can't handle. He knows who is at the docks. He won't talk. He'll talk to me. Who is with Falcone at the docks? I don't know. I swear to God. Swear to me. What in God's name are you? I'm Batman. Who was with Falcone at the docks? Show murdered my parents and they deserve... Don't pretend you wanted to do this for them. Happy birthday, Bruce. Oh, Mr. Earl. Good of you to come. Not everybody thought you'd make it this far. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Who was with Falcone at the docks? I don't know, I swear to God. Swear to me! The voice of Bruce Wayne isn't bad, but when you see it, like, his face just does not match up with it at all. And, like, you know, Killian Murphy's a great actor. He did a great job as Jonathan Crane as a scarecrow, but he's not, like, that, uh... He's not the Bruce Wayne, he's not the Batman type of superhero you come to expect. So that's, you know, Christian got the role over him. And everything worked out. And then Killian Murphy's had a great career since then, and he, show up, he showed up in all three of, uh... Yeah, all three of Nolan's Batman movies. He was in Batman Begins... He was in Batman, or he was in The Dark Knight in the beginning, in the opening scene, where Batman's chasing the uh, drug dealers. And the third one, he showed up as uh, the judge in uh, Bane's crazy court trials. So Batman begins, that that scene down at the docks, man, that warehouse scene where you, you it's like the first time you officially see uh, Christian Bale put on the Batman you know, costume, the uniform. That's the first time you see him as Batman. And he's just like, people are dis disappearing in the dark, left and right. You don't know what's going on. And then he's got that one scene where that guy's backing up, firing the machine gun, asking, uh, where are you? And he's just hanging right behind him. Here, the guy goes, oh! 
Like that's that's the closest. I think that's one of my favorite Batman scenes of all time. That Hey, Stice. What? What? Better check it. scene in the first one you know where he's just messing dudes up left and right before he gets to Jack Nicholson and he just ends up you know falling in the vat after that that's you know that's something that Batman Forever and Batman and Robin and even Batman Returns to an extent were missing they just didn't have that tone that darkness to it like you know Batman's a good guy he's not going to kill you but he's going to scare the hell out of you and mess up your day and if you go back and watch that doc scene again, I'm telling you, man, it's intense. Like, there's nothing... That's, I, I, that's got to be my favorite scene in the movie. That and uh, when they come back from the party, when Bruce comes to the party and he's, you know, pretending to be drunk, and the lady says, oh, Bruce, let me introduce you to this guy here. It's His name is Rouse Al Ghoul. And, like, you're like, what? Because in the beginning, like, this is Bruce Wayne's, you know, mentor when he goes off into, you know, China or East Asia becomes like a, you know, tries to become a ninja. And like, you know, I'm not, you know, obviously I hope people have seen Batman Begins, but I mean, you know, I'm not going to ruin it for you or anything like that. But, you know, you, you assume Ra's al Ghul is dead. And then Bruce Wayne had saved his mentor, who was Liam Neeson, who was Henry Ducard. And he, <laughs> he, uh, he, he didn't follow the rules there. I mean, uh, Liam Neeson's character warned him. He's like, I warned you about being too soft, you know. You, you know, you gotta, you know, if you're gonna kill somebody, kill them. You know, you burned my house down and left me for dead. Now I'm gonna do the same to you. And, you know, Bruce Wayne turns around and says, you're not Ra's al Ghul, I killed him. And then you hear from the background, is Ra's al Ghul immortal? Are his methods supernatural? Bruce, there's somebody here no, no, you simply Wayne. must meet. Now, am I pronouncing this right? Mr. Raz Al Ghul? You're not Raz Al Ghul. I watched him die. But is Raz Al Ghul immortal? 
Are his methods supernatural? Or cheap parlor tricks to conceal your true identity, Ross? Surely a man who spends his nights scrambling over the rooftops of Gotham wouldn't begrudge me dual identities. I saved your life. I warned you about compassion, Bruce. Liam Neeson was great in that role. And that, that's a twist I didn't see coming, and I usually see twists coming from a mile away, but that's one that took even me by surprise. Like, I did not expect to see... I expected to see Liam Neeson again, but I didn't expect the misdirection, because Ken Watanabe plays Ra's al Ghul in the beginning, or the person you think is Ra's al Ghul, but it's not. He's just a stand-in for Liam Neeson's character. That's a, that's a classic Nolan you know, twist you didn't see coming. The end of Batman Begins, I think when we were in the theater, got, that was like one of the first like standing ovations I ever remember uh, sitting through in a movie wise. I mean, so this is 2005, you already had Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, and stuff like that, which is, uh, they were considered at one point the two best superhero movies of all time, and then, you know, you started getting... The X-Men movies came out, and then you had this Nolan trilogy, and the one after that followed, Batman Begins. I don't even consider The Dark Knight a superhero movie. It's, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's far above par. Like, it's, it's so well beyond anything we've seen. And I'm not, like, I'm not, like, trashing it, but, like, I have movies that I don't consider superhero movies. The Dark Knight is not a superhero movie. Logan is not a superhero movie. The first Iron Man movie is not a superhero movie. Those, they extend far beyond that. They're incredible movies that are mountains and peaks above anything that I've seen. Not saying there aren't great comic book movies. I love them all. Like Avengers Endgame is incredible. Infinity War. But those are comic book movies. These are not. These are films. These are incredibly acted, incredibly well written, and incredibly well directed movies. You can't classify these as comic book movies. They star comic book characters, but they're not comic book movies. That's, that's just the way I see it. People are going to disagree, but that's, you know, just how it is. And so, yeah, it's like I was saying before, at the end of Batman Begins is uh, when Commissioner Gordon hands Bruce the, uh, the card. He said, uh, double homicide, he's got a taste for theatrics, leaves a calling card, and it's the Joker. And Batman says, I'll look into it. We will. We can bring Gotham back. What about escalation? Escalation. We start carrying semi-automatics, they buy automatics. We start wearing Kevlar. They buy armor-piercing rounds. And? And you're wearing a mask. Jumping off rooftops. Now take this guy. Arm robbery, double homicide. Got it? taste for the theatrical like you leaves a calling card I'll look into it yeah the whole theater erupted at that point they were all going crazy you know that's <laughs> it, it didn't happen back then I mean I can't I mean Star Wars didn't really have a lot of standing ovations or a lot of clapping going on that stuff didn't start until I think, like, Iron Man... I mean, people clapped, obviously. I mean, obviously some theaters are different than others, but, like, the, cr the crowd went crazy when that Joker card got flipped over. That was like, you know, we're in for a treat in this next movie because you know... <laughs> you know who's coming. And, uh... Like, I can't remember what the... How much money did Batman Begins actually end up making? Okay, so the budget for Batman Begins was $150 million, and it brought in $373 million which is probably not that impressive nowadays in 2020, but 2005, that was a huge deal. I mean, then, you know, we know what happened after that. You got The Dark Knight, one of the greatest films ever made, I believe, and The Dark Knight Rises, which is still a good movie. I mean, it, it takes a lot of flack for what it got, but Christopher Nolan did an incredible job with all three films. Is The Dark Knight Rises probably the weakest of the bunch? Yes, but it's, there's still some incredible scenes in there. There's still, it's still a good movie. The last 45 minutes are incredible. I mean, that the battle for Gotham, when, when Bruce escapes the hole and all that stuff. I mean, it's must-see cinema right there. 
Uh, obviously, Katie Holmes was in Batman Begins, which was confusing to me even when she was cast. I know she was a bigger star in 2005 than she is now. Didn't make much sense. Okay, and then we got uh, Chick from Dawson's Creek is here, and Disturbing Behavior. Okay. Michael Caine is the prototypical Alfred. And it's funny, because I think him and Jeremy Irons are like the two perfect perfect actors to play Alfred. Like, Michael Ghoul, Michael Ghoul, obviously in the first, you know, in the, in the Burton movies and later the Schumacher movies is still good, but I think when you're thinking about star power to, a, to the Alfred Pennyworth role, I don't think it gets any better than Academy Award winner Michael Caine or Academy Award winner Jeremy Irons, who played him in uh, Batman, Superman, and, uh, and Justice League. I mean, Jeremy Irons, did for, you know, they asked him to play a different role than Michael Caine played. But, I mean, Michael Caine, I think, is, when you think about Alfred, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And he sounds like him, and he looks like a butler, and it's just, you know, Michael Caine's awesome. And Lucis Fox is played by the always incredible Academy Award winner Morgan Freeman, who he had a, he had a bigger role coming down the line in The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. The one thing I do like that Nolan does is he gives actors that you haven't seen in a while a chance to show back up again. And, uh... He had uh, the late Rudger Hauer show up as like the chairman of the board of Wayne Enterprises. Uh, William Earl. I mean, Rudger Hauer, back in the day, the Hitcher. Uh, uh, the Hitcher, Blade Runner. Even Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, Rudger Hauer's the man. And, like, you, did, you didn't see him in films back, you know, in 2005. He kind of disappeared. And Christopher Nolan brought him back the same way he did with... Uh, Eric Roberts in The Dark Knight, and then Matthew Modine in The Dark Knight Rises. Just these great character actors that you don't see anymore. And he's like, well, let me bring these guys back. Like he, he's And Christopher Nolan's famous for doing that. He does it all the time. Like, he brought Tom Berenger back for Inception. Like, uh, David Bowie. David Bowie and, I'm pretty sure, uh, Andy Serkis was in The Prestige as his assistant. Just, you know, Nolan pulls these ideas out. Nobody says no to him because they work. And I really can't believe it's been 15 years since Batman Begins came out. Like, it makes me feel old at this point. I'm 33 now. And, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh... The, I don't know how you could forget to mention Commissioner... Or, you know, uh, Gary Oldman's Jim Gordon, but he's not the commissioner yet. He's still, you know, like a beat cop, basically. And that's something I wasn't expecting. Like, you know, this was, like, I figured this was Batman beginning, but you wouldn't think Commissioner Gordon didn't also have this job, so you got to see him grow in the role as Jim Gordon, you know, from from beat cop to sergeant to detective, and then in The Dark Knight Rises, he gets the job to commissioner. So, like, as Bruce is growing as Batman, Jim Gordon's also growing as, you know, becoming the the uh, great cop and heroic commissioner of Gotham City that he would later become. And another, another thing I wanted to mention, I always forget him, and he's in the show. Me and my wife just started watching uh, The Morning Show, and Nestor Cabron is in it. And that guy was awesome and lost. He plays the mayor in all three of the Batman movies of the Nolan trilogy. That guy is a totally underrated actor, in my opinion. He's great in everything he's in. I wish we got to see him in more things. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're going to have more videos and stuff coming out. I hope you guys watch this. I hope you enjoy it. So follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Keep watching. I'm going to keep churning them out as much as possible. I'm going to eventually get to this uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recap that I've been meaning to do. It's so hard to recap these six seasons. I'm like, I keep trying and it's not working, but I will try my best to get it done. Uh, thanks, guys. Subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.